Hello and welcome to another series of videos created to show off the new features of Cabinet Vision. In this video, we will be covering new assembly features. Let's start this off by opening the assembly wizard and taking a look at what we've done there. Okay, none of the new features are showing yet, so let's expand the interior case branch to see some of them. Immediately, you can see that there is now a shoe section wizard available in the assembly wizard. What we did here was allow you to define how a shoe section, or cubby, will be created in a cabinet object. We will get more into adding shoe sections later in the video. Let's go ahead and edit this part to see how you define a shoe section. The first thing that we are prompted with is specifying the minimum height for a single section. Now keep in mind, this is the bare minimum that we want for the height of the section, not the actual height, because that will be calculated by cabinet vision when you place it in the cabinet. Next we have the minimum width for a shoe section. As with the height, this is the bare minimum. Next we can define how we want our horizontal parts to join to our ends. The default is a simple butt joint, but we can also specify a dado amount if we want. We can also do the same for the vertical shoe section parts. Now I'm not sure if you noticed it yet, but another new feature has been glaring at us quietly from the corner of the window. It's the finish button. Starting with Cabinet Vision version 8, you will now be able to click on the finish button regardless of where you are in the wizard. Unlike in previous versions, where you had to go all the way through every option in the wizard before you could click the finish button. Finally, we can define the notch extension value. This will add the amount specified to the notches made where the horizontal and vertical parts meet to compensate for your cutting tool radius. The next feature has to do with vertical boring, so let's move to that by collapsing the interior case section and expanding out the operation section. Now we can just select the assembly boring item and then click on the edit selected part button. Okay, the new feature is buried a little ways into the wizard, so I'm going to just skip a few steps here. And now you can see the first new boring feature. Starting with Cabinet Vision version 8, you will be able to define the vertical position of all boring holes. Another new feature, which is pretty much just an extension of the last one, is that we can set a different vertical position for boring holes on boards. The next feature that I want to talk about is buried a little bit further on. So let's go ahead and skip ahead some more. As you can see, we can now specify boring holes for back parts. We can set the holes to appear on finished backs only, unfinished backs only, both finished and unfinished backs, or we can specify that no boring should be put on any back parts. Now there's one more feature that I want to talk about to finish this video up. And here it is. Starting with Cabinet Vision version 8, you will be able to specify the exact distance from the edge of the back to the center of the first and last construction boring holes for back parts. Now that we have all the wizard stuff out of the way, let's flash forward to a job with a single cabinet in it. Now let's take this cabinet to the assembly view. And from here all we need to do is switch to the interior view of the cabinet and select one of the interior sections. Now you can see here in the sidebar the different types available to us. One of them is cubbies. If we change the opening type to cubbies, we can see that cabinet vision has created a set of cubby holes that follow the options that we set in the assembly wizard earlier. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on the new features of Cabinet Vision. We hope you enjoyed it, and as always, if you want more information on Cabinet Vision Solid, please visit our website at www.cabinetvision.com.